Welcome everyone. Welcome to the fifth and last week of this course about QCA. The first two lectures of this week focus on using software to conduct a QCA analysis. And the third lecture discusses the write-up of a QCA study. The software that we will discuss can be used for all major analytic steps, which is convenient and practical as doing all the analysis manually is time consuming. There are different software packages you can use, Tosmana and FSQCA are the two most widely used programs. In this lecture, I will show you how to use the program FSQCA, version 3.0. I will use the Windows version of the program, but the Mac version is not very different. My explanation will be relevant for both Fuzzy and Crisp Set QCA. Although FSQCA stands for Fuzzy Set QCA, you can use the program for both, for both Fuzzy and Crisp Sets. Now there are three main steps that we will discuss as regards the use of FSQCA. It starts with uploading a data matrix. Then you make the truth table and lastly you minimize the truth table. In this lecture we will discuss the part that is shown in red, uploading a data matrix and making the truth table. As regards making the truth table we will discuss only how the program distinguishes between truth table rows or configurations and assigns cases to each row. These are, as discussed in week three, the first two steps of making a truth table. The analysis starts with uploading a data matrix. To do that, you go to File, click Open, and then you can select the data matrix from your browser. Data matrices need to be saved in a specific format before you can upload them. The required format is described in the manual of the program, which is mentioned in this week's reading list. As an example, I will select the dataset of a study by Downey and Stenier from 2014. It appears in the left side of the main window. You can see the conditions and the outcome in the columns, and the cases are in the rows. In this study, the authors wanted to explain why media publicize politicians' infidelity. So publicized infidelity, denoted with pub inf, is their outcome. The authors expected that this publicized infidelity can be explained by five conditions, including low party identification among voters, or LPI, the presence of a tabloid media sector, or TAB, and weak privacy protection, or WPP. And they investigated the outcome and these conditions in eight different countries. If you want to know more about the study, check the literature list of this course and find the full reference for the study by Downey and Stenier from 2014. In the second step of using the program, you have to transform the data matrix into a truth table. To do that, you go to Analyze, and then you click on Truth Table Algorithm. In the subsequent window, you have to indicate the outcome via set, and you need to indicate the conditions via add. You do this when you want to analyze which conditions lead to the presence of the outcome. To analyze the absence of the outcome, you will have to bring your outcome through the set negated button here to the outcome box. It's good to keep in mind that the analysis of the absence of the outcome is similar to the analysis of the presence of the outcome. So while the outcome differs, the next steps in using the program stay the same. You can also ask the program to show you the cases for each row in the truth table. You can do that by clicking on Show Solution Cases in Output and indicating which column in the data matrix contains the cases. Now after you've indicated the outcome, the conditions and the cases in your model, you can press OK and then the truth table appears in a new window. You can see that the conditions are described in terms of zeros, indicating absence, and ones indicating presence. Thus, even though the data matrix here contained fuzzy data, the truth table only shows zeros and ones. Further, you can see that the program has distinguished between all possible configurations in the rows which is the first step in making a truth table. 
and the program has also assigned cases to each configuration, which is the second step of making a truth table. In this column, it indicates the number of cases for each truth table row and, between parentheses, the cumulative percentage for each row. And in this column, you can press on one of the buttons to see which cases are assigned to which rows. You can see that the third step of making a truth table, which is defining the column with the outcome, has not yet been taken. The truth table does not automatically mention in that column a 1 to indicate the sufficiency of a truth table row for the outcome or a 0 for insufficiency. Instead, you will need to define the outcome of each row based on the raw consistencies in this column. And I will show you how you can do that in the next video. In the next video, we will also discuss the logical minimization. See you next time.